ways to craft a really powerful, interesting and winning paragraph. And one of these methods is using the PETA paragraph. Now, PETA is an acronym for the following. Point, evidence technique, explanation and reader. Again, this acronym might sound like really complicated, you know, it might sound very confusing, but actually, to be honest, the PETA paragraph is one of a, a range of paragraphs that you can use that can be very effective in achieving your aims of making your explanations really clear. And also, this is also a good way of organizing your thoughts as you're writing out your responses, be it for a language test or for a literature test. Now, as you can see behind me, I have uh, put together an example Peter paragraph, which I want to walk you through. Now, remember that this example is just taken from a language exercise, okay? However, you can substitute some of these keywords for, for example, if you're given a Macbeth essay, you can substitute those keywords for Macbeth, or if you're given an essay on whatever other text, you can substitute it for that and indeed any other language extract, okay? But this is just one of the examples, and this is taken from an exam extract, okay? More specifically, by a lady called Susan Hill, okay? This appeared in a language paper. Now, let's quickly look at the question in my example before I show you how I applied the Peter method to answering this question and crafting my paragraph. Now, the question was, how does the opening of this extract create a tense atmosphere? Now, you will notice within this question, I've already underlined some words. These are what we call keywords, the most important bits of the question that you need to directly address in your answer to show your teacher or your examiner that you understand the assignment. The keywords are opening, tense, as well as atmosphere, okay? These are the stuff that's not so obvious within the question that you need to directly address. Now, as I mentioned, PETA stands for Point, Evidence, Technique, Explanation and Reader. So let's start off with point. What does that mean? Point simply means you're answering the question directly and you're referring in your opening by directly referring to the keywords. These are the bits that you underlined from the question. So let's read through my example. Now, this is my opening point. The opening of this extract creates a tense, ominous atmosphere. Ominous means terrifying, scary. As we can see, the narrator feels secluded and alienated, secluded, alone and alienated. Ilmarsh House seems isolated, hence there's a powerful feeling of dread created. Now, in my opening point, I have restated the key words, the words opening, tense and atmosphere here, okay? So I've talked about the opening of this extract, a tense atmosphere. The reason why I have restated these words is because I'm showing the examiner really clearly, hey, I understand this question and I'm gonna begin by addressing this question directly. You have to do that in your opening point, okay? So that's the P in my Peter paragraph. Now let's look at the E in my Peter paragraph, which is evidence. Evidence simply means quote from the text to support your opening point. Now let's look at my quotation. We learned that, speech marks, the house felt like a ship at sea, close speech marks in the extract, okay? So as you can see here, I have embedded my quotation, which is the house felt like a ship at sea, okay? So I've embedded this quotation within my evidence, okay? Again, as I mentioned, evidence is you supporting your opening point. Now let's look at the T in my Peter paragraph. T, as I mentioned, stands for technique. And what this means is you need to mention a technical term. Does a writer use a really interesting form of alliteration, simile, metaphor, even sentence type? Okay, do they use an interesting simple sentence, compound, complex, declarative, and so on, okay? So now let's look at how I've talked about technique here. The author's use of the simile, speech marks, like a sheep, ship, <laughs> close speech marks, emphasizes how turbulent and tumultuous, turbulent means violent, tumultuous means unpredictable, okay? The weather was outside, okay? So the author's use of the simile, like a ship, emphasizes how turbulent and tumultuous the weather was outside, as you can see here. I have mentioned very clearly a technique, which is simile. Now let's move on to the E in my Peter. So this is the second E, which is explanation. Explanation simply means you need to explain the effect of this technique. I will show you what I mean by explaining the effect of this technique. This conveys the narrator's feeling of dread and terror, okay? So as you can see here, the effect that I'm showing is what does this show us about the character in this story, okay? It seems they are alone in a vast house which seems unstable, thus they feel vulnerable. Now I've explained how this simile also is showing that the narrator is like totally alone, okay? There's nobody around them, all right? So I've said that the narrator feels dread and terror, that's the first 
explanation but also I then expand on that by saying also the way the house is described it seems really unstable so the narrator feels totally exposed totally vulnerable that is my explanation I'm now explaining this technique a bit further however I'm not yet done with my Peter paragraph because I have to talk about the R bit the reader how this affects us as readers of course if it's a play you're talking about you need to talk about audience okay so as I mentioned in the reader bit you have to explain how this makes us as readers feel and link it back to the question the keywords in the question of course being opening tense and atmosphere okay so I'm going to read my reader part now thus we as readers develop a terrible feeling of foreboding foreboding means like a really bad feeling that something terrible is going to happen as we wonder if the narrator will be attacked Hence, the author creates a tense atmosphere at the opening, which immediately captivates us, okay? So as you can see here, I've mentioned tense atmosphere, as well as this idea of it being at the opening. I've restated the keywords in the question and also talked about how this affects us as readers, all right? So I'm gonna read the reader bit once more, just to be clear, okay? So thus we as readers develop a terrible feeling of foreboding as we wonder if the narrator will be attacked. Hence, the author creates a tense atmosphere at the opening, which immediately captivates us, captures our interest as readers, all right? So as I mentioned, Peter simply stands for point, evidence, technique, explanation, and reader. This is a really, really useful paragraph structure that you can use in order to write really powerful paragraphs, which hopefully, if you craft it really well, can actually really get you very close to a grade nine, if not actually getting you deep in the grade nine territory. For your English GCSE essays. That's it when it comes to Peter paragraphs. Do make sure you just literally take this and just apply it to whatever question you're using. Just substitute, you know, some of these words for the keywords within your question. Thanks so much for listening.